the Associate Executive Director and uh, education and events. And I plan our meetings and different functions, including Grand, excuse me, Grand Chapter Congress. So uh, it seemed like I was probably the right person to kind of walk you through the program of what's happening, what to expect, what to bring, and answer questions that you might have that I don't cover. So I'm just gonna share a whole lot of information with you for the next few minutes. You're welcome to put a question in the chat, but when I am done um, here in a few minutes, I will open it up to questions if I missed anything or if I wasn't, didn't give you enough info. Uh, so whether this is your first Grand Chapter Congress or your 17th like me or your 25th like some others, this Congress is gonna be a little different. So just wanna kind of run through things with you a bit. So it's gonna be different because we don't have elections this time. Um, as you know, this is a special Grand Chapter Congress. This is a not a traditional Congress year for us. Traditionally, Congress is odd years in August. This is an even year in July. So a lot of differences right there. So no elections, no chapter awards at this Congress. We'll do those in the fall and make sure we're recognizing everybody. Um, but we do have lots of legislation and we have a lot of other activities that you're used to and some new ones I'm gonna tell you about. So assuming you're you know, coming into Cleveland, many of you on Tuesday, some of you sooner, but on Tuesday, that's when you're gonna get checked into the hotel, you're gonna come to the Delta SIG registration desk, check in with us there, get all your swag, all your ribbons. You're gonna go to the credentials table if you're a delegate or an alternate, and you're gonna meet Tyler Havens and his team over there, who's, they're gonna get you all your materials for that. The Congress host table is going to have some goodies to give away to all of our registrants, so you're definitely going to want to stop there. And then our banquet seating table will be up and running, so if you have not finalized your banquet seating plans, you can stop by there and talk to our fine volunteers who are making that happen. Uh, we'll also have the central office store open. But otherwise, once you get there and get yourself settled, go enjoy Cleveland. It's a it's a great city. It's very walkable from our hotel. You can get to dozens, dozens and dozens of restaurants and activities within 10 minutes of the hotel. Very easy walk and it's mostly flat. So that's nice for those that come from hilly cities. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to kick it off with some networking in the morning and move into more than 30 educational sessions uh, and career focused roundtables. So you're also going to have an opportunity to go tour the rocket mortgage offices if you'd like that will be an optional activity that we'll share more information Wednesday morning about. We're going to have the history of ritual featured as a session that day. We're going to have a new uh, COI panel. So our Collegians of the Year from 2020, 21, and 22 will be sharing some information and other things with you for a bit in the afternoon, immediately followed by our keynote, and it's titled, It's Not Personal, It's Interpersonal. And that's being led by Adekunle Samuel, who is a brother and is the lead culture consultant at Target Companies. Uh, the day keeps going. Wednesday's a big one. Uh, we have a new diversity and affinity networking reception that evening that we hope everybody will stop by and take part in. And then you can go immediately from that over to our grand president's reception and tailgate where Monster Energy, one of our, uh, a partner for that evening, will be showcasing some of their beverages. So you can try out some of the new Monster brands. And we have a lot of games. We're going to have food. It's going to be fun. Music, all kinds of good stuff. So don't miss that. Move it into Thursday. So, you know, after those events happen, go get some sleep because we've got more big days coming. Um, Thursday morning, we're going to kick it off with an initiation. I know some of you have not seen an in-person initiation maybe ever with COVID. And if you're a newer initiate, that's something that you may not have seen in person yet, or you haven't seen one in a long time. So want to make sure everybody joins us for that. Then we're going to move into business sessions, get that kicked off and start diving into the legislation, the 13 items. And we'll talk more about that a little later. We're going to take a break for lunch where we're going to recognize 
the 2022 Career Achievement Honoree Jay Farner with Rocket Mortgage, Mark Rocket Companies, and also dozens of Delta SIGs with silver and golden helmets and Leadership Foundation recognition. And then Thursday night is open. You get to enjoy Cleveland out on your own. So there's a lot of fun stuff going on around town and you can figure out what it is you might want to, to go and do. Friday, we're back at it with an all new activity I'm very excited about. On Friday morning, we are going to do, at least as far as I know in all the years I've been here, our first time hands-on service event at Grand Chapter Congress. So we are going to be doing uh, we're going to make blankets for fleece and thank you, um, and that helps kids in hospitals. That's where they get the donated, and then we're also going to make cards for Ronald McDonald House Charities, and that's going to go to the children, to the families, and also to the healthcare workers. So there's lots of opportunities we're going to have that morning on Friday, and we hope that you will come join us and take part in one or more of those activities. We've got a lot going on. We've got a lot of blankets to make, and there's sure, unfortunately, there's a lot of children who could use a little pick-me-up with a card, and moms and dads could sure use that too. Um, then also that morning, something new, we're going to have a President's Academy uh, a reunion. So if you have been to a President's Academy in the past, we would invite you to come join us at this reunion and just reconnect. Uh, hopefully you see some people you've met at your own or people you've met throughout the years at Leeds and other events. We then move into a lunch for all registrants to recognize the chapters and brothers. And then we're on to more business and legislation that afternoon. That night, is the exciting Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's a private event for Delta Sigs. We have the whole place to ourselves. We'll have a live band out on the patio, assuming the weather's good. And if not, they'll bring it inside. It's a dessert reception. So make sure you have dinner before you come, but we're gonna have some little, little treats for everyone to enjoy there. And you get to take part in all the different exhibits that the Rock Hall offers, including the garage where you can make your own music and form your own rock band with friends you're, you're with or meet new friends if you needed somebody else with an instrument. Um, and then we head on over to Saturday. So we're not done yet. And Saturday's another exciting day in the finale. Um, we're going to kick off that morning with the last of the business sessions and we'll have an installation of officers that morning. Then you can take a little downtime in the afternoon and get ready for the big event that night, the, the grand chapter banquet and program that we'll have. The Leadership Foundation will have an auction that evening with some really cool stuff. Um, you'll be able to stop by their table throughout the week and see what, what they plan to auction off Saturday night. Stop by, place your bid, and maybe you'll go home with some really cool, cool things. Uh, we're going to have live music with the Saturday night event. And then we'll have our traditional badge raffle for a diamond badge, a couple of pearl and ruby badges. And we're going to throw a couple of extra prizes in this year. So definitely when you get there, get your tickets. Um, we're going to recognize our 2021 Lifetime Achievement honoree, Joelle Burlatt. And then we're also going to celebrate the retirement of Executive Director Emeritus Bill Schilling and just celebrate the many successes of Delta Sigma Pi. Then, uh, yeah, and that's the end of Congress officially. Sunday, you pack up, you head home, you're sad. I remember my first Congress, I cried at the airport because I was so sad to be leaving all these new people I met. Um, so I hope you, you know, have that happen as well. Um, so this week, by Thursday, you're going to get an email from us at the central office, and it's going to be your final email confirmation for this event with a lot of information we hope you'll read through. But one of the most important pieces of that is going to be the instructions on downloading our new app that you will use at Grand Chapter Congress. So those instructions are in there, get it downloaded so that you can save that step once you're on site. We are going to have a really fun uh, GCC QR code adventure as part of our app. So there are going to be 16 QR codes strategically placed throughout Congress. 
and you can play along. Um, we'll have three winners at the end. The game ends on Saturday at noon and we'll announce the winners Saturday night at the banquet for some really cool prizes from our partners. Speaking of partners, we want you to visit our marketplace throughout the week to meet the partners and buy slag from Mecca and our chapters that may be selling. And speaking of, July 1st is the deadline for chapters who wish to sell merchandise at Congress to get that approved and submitted via the hub so that we can get a table reserved for you. July 1st, that's Friday, guys. So if you have not submitted that yet and you're planning to sell, please, please send that in. And if you know of a chapter planning to do so, whether it's collegiate or alumni, please make sure they are reminded of that deadline. Um, bring with you, bring your pull tabs to donate to Ronald McDonald House Charities. We are almost at the million mark. We've been striving to hit the million tabs since our last grand chapter in person. We're almost there. We're going to do it. But bring your tabs and you'll donate those at the community service table. You can also bring your, I call it gently used Delta Sigma Pi t-shirts. Um, to donate, and then we're going to have a buyback program for $5 cash, and the proceeds of that will go to Ronald McDonald House. We've done that the last couple Congresses, been kind of fun, people have gotten new swag to wear, and, um, but, you know, if, if they're beat up in holy shirts, probably not, but bring, bring nicer shirts that you would want to buy. Um, so there's just so, so much happening. Um, you don't want to miss the fun. Take advantage of all the opportunities we have to meet and network and make a difference. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention COVID. Eh, it's still happening, as we know. Darn it. Um, we don't have any particular protocols in place. There are none required by the hotel. There are none by, you know, the city, the county, the state of Ohio. However, we want you to you know, be comfortable. If you want to wear a mask, please wear a mask. Um, and we want everybody to support each other in, you know, our decisions of how we approach being in person with, you know, hundreds of people together. Uh, so, uh, you know, do that. Hand sanitizers around the hotel. Um, just, yeah, you know, do, do what you need to do and your brothers will, will support your decisions in, in whatever you need to, to stay healthy. Um, I also want to note, because anyone who's tried to go anywhere lately, travel is kind of a hot mess right now, and we know that. Um, we hope that your flights and your drives and everything are safe and on time and maybe even early. I don't know if that happens at all. Um, but if you do find that you are delayed because of travel issues, and especially if you're a delegate or you are a presenter um, or someone that has a specific role to be somewhere committed, please notify your regional vice president if you are a, um, if a delegate and you're going to be late to activities. Letting them know is the best course of action so that they can help keep in touch with you and find out when you're going to arrive. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to tell you about. But what we're going to do now is we're going to move into talking about the delegate role. So if you're not a delegate, you're welcome to leave. However, I am going to open it up to questions first for anything about the program that I just talked about. But if you're a delegate or an alternate or a national leader, I would ask you to stick around after the Q&A here. Uh, and I think... That's all I have to say, unless you have some questions. You can turn your camera on or just pop in. Dress code for Friday and Saturday night. So Friday night is casual. It's You're going to walk over to the Rock Hall of Fame. Some of it's outside, some of it's inside. So just be comfortable and casual. Um, for Friday night, attire is professional or formal. Some people will be wearing formal attire, um, certainly not required. You can, you know, keep a, a suit or a nice dress on. Um, so we've got that. Is there a theme for the banquet? There is not a theme for the banquet other than just come celebrate our first big event since COVID. Um, so no, no specific theme. Uh, if we have food allergies, who should we reach out to? Great question. If you did not notify us in um, when you registered, there was a location there to mention any special dietary needs or allergies. If you have not done that, 
before Friday of this week, please reach out to registration at dsp.org. So registration at dsp.org and let them know your food situation and they will get you all taken care of there. Thank you folks for putting things in chat as I'm talking. Um, let me see. Somebody has a hand up. Allie, you had a hand? Go ahead. Yeah, I did. I was just going to ask about the dress code for Friday and Saturday night as well. But another question that I had was what time do you think we should arrive on Tuesday? Yeah, you know, so Tuesday registration is open from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. So ideally you're in the hotel so you can check in with us before that 9 p.m. end time so that you're ready to roll on Wednesday morning with this. And we do get started on Wednesday morning at, I should have had that right here in front of me. One moment. I can't, I believe it's at nine, but I just want to double check it before I, I tell this whole group the wrong time. Right. Yes, 9 a.m. is our kickoff on Wednesday morning. Awesome. Um, and yeah. then, sorry, just one more question. For the hotel check-in, we don't have to be 21 to check-in, correct? Correct. No, okay. that should not be an issue um, at all. You know, we, we've contracted for that not to be an issue. Certainly, if you get there and find it is, um, let, you know, contact your regional vice president and they will track me down and um, we'll get it figured out, but that should not be an issue. Great. And I Thank will, so I will cover it with them again. Thank you so much. Of course. Um, are meals provided every day of Congress? No, they are not. Um, so the actual full meals that happen during Congress is the, for a full registrant is Thursday lunch, Friday lunch, and the Saturday night banquet. Uh, there's the snacks on Wednesday night at the grand president's reception, but it's snacks. It's not a dinner. And there'll be the desserts at the Friday night rock and roll hall of fame event. Um, okay. We've got a couple more hands. I'm looking for them here. My screen. Deja got from Deja. Deja. Yeah. Daisha, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, so just a quick question. Uh, we won't be flying in Tuesday until around 11 PM. Would that be an issue since we won't make a uh, check-in on time for like cred credentialing? No, you'll be fine. So what you should do is make sure you get up bright and early and come join us at about 8.30 on Wednesday morning when registration and credentials open up again. Okay, thank you. Of course. And I think somebody else has a hand up. I can't find them if somebody else All can right. help me. Gabriella from Tall Omega. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, Thank you. I had the exact same question as the last person. We won't be getting there till like very early Wednesday morning. And that's why I wanted to make sure like that was okay. Cause we'll be getting there like at 5 40 AM. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just come on down. Like I say, registration and credentials will open at 8 30 AM again on Wednesday morning. So if you come down and get checked in and everything taken care of, you'll be all ready to step into the 9 AM kickoff. Right. Perfect. You might be tired, but we'd love to have you. <laughs> um, Matt asked if we'd be getting more detailed dress code info for the whole week. Yes. So in the email that you're going to get this week, it will have dress code. And then the app that you're going to download has even more detailed day by day information for you. There is not a shuttle that runs from the airport to the hotel. Sorry. Um, Uber, Lyft. Um, rental car, although hotel parking prices are very high, so I would recommend trying to avoid that. And then there's also the RTA, which is their public transportation. They have a train that runs from the airport to about a block, block and a half from our hotel. Um, so that is certainly an option and very affordable. I think it's five bucks, maybe not, maybe not even that. And that information and links to that will be in the email you get this week and in the app. What else? Any other questions? Great questions. Thank you for asking all those. All right. Well, at this point, then I'm going to introduce you to Tyler Havens, our credentials chair for Grand Chapter Congress. And if you have more questions that you think of as he's talking, we're going to have more Q&A at the end so we can catch it in there. 
But Tyler, I turn it to you. Thank you all. All right. All right. Thanks so much, Shanda. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in Cleveland as well in just a few weeks. So as Shanda said, my name is Tyler Havens. And by day, I serve as the Director of Chapter Services at the Central Office. But during Congress, I will be serving as your credentials chair. I'm going to talk in generalities for the benefit of everyone. Um, delegates will receive more in-depth instructions and training during their delegate orientation in Cleveland. My primary role as the credentials chair is to ensure that delegates are reported, uh, eligible to serve, keep the number of delegates who are on the floor during a meeting, and ensure only those chapters that are eligible to vote are doing the voting. Um, I'm going to also introduce you to uh, members of the Rules and Regulations uh, Committee who will be sitting up at, on the dais at, on the stage. Uh, and if you are here, please turn your camera on so everybody can see your bright and shiny face. Um, so first, we'll start obviously with our Grand President, Corey Stopka. Tricia Smith, who will serve as uh, the Nominations Committee as past Grand President. Um, so if there are any elections or discrepancies in delegate eligibility, the nominations chair oversees those. Uh, Bill Kinsella, I know, is here, uh, who is a past grand president and will be serving as the chancellor for this Congress. Uh, Bill, as the chancellor, is going to serve as the chair of the meeting and will move the, the grand chapter through the agenda. Jeremy Levine, who in his day job serves as the executive director of the fraternity, but he will be the Congress secretary in Cleveland and the secretary is responsible for maintaining the minutes throughout Congress. And last but certainly not least is Jeff Neurotter. Uh, Jeff, who will serve as our parliamentarian over the weekend, uh, is responsible for ensuring we move through our business according to our, our own ritual bylaws, policies, procedures, and parliamentary procedure appropriately. So you'll find all of us up on that dais, as I said, or the stage at the front of the room at Congress. In addition to the Rules and Regulations Committee, you'll also see the remaining members of the Board of Directors, including the Vice President of Finance, Collegians of the Year, and Provincial Vice Presidents. You may also see various Central Office staff member uh, during the meetings as well. I, again, I have a few general things to talk about before I take questions, uh, and I wanna start with the room setup. So in our larger space for each of our business meeting, there will be tables and chairs set up for the delegates, which we'll call the delegate floor and rows of chairs just behind the delegate floor, which, which we'll call the gallery. Uh, only delegates, grand officers, uh, which are your board and RVP, staff and volunteers designated to support Congress um, are supposed to be on the delegate floor once the meeting has been gaveled by the chair. We move through the agenda, we're expecting to cover legislation in the order presented in the legislation packet. So if you haven't already, you should be reviewing the legislation, uh, having any necessary conversations with your chapters, uh, about the legislation prior to arriving in Cleveland. You can access the legislation by visiting dsp.org slash GCC on our website, and delegates will also receive hard copies upon arriving in Cleveland, and the information can also be in the app that Shanda discussed. Also keep in mind, each delegate does have the autonomy to cast a different vote than what is discussed if after hearing debate they believe it's in the best interest to do so. So delegates will have the ability to debate the actions on the delegate floor. If there's someone who would like to speak on an action and is not a delegate, they can have the floor yielded to them. We can get, we'll get into that uh, later with the delegates. Um, when it comes to voting, there's three different types of votes and that can be called by the chair. So a voice vote, which is where the chair will ask the delegates to call out yay or nay, a uh, placard vote, where the chair will ask delegates to raise their placards for a yay or nay, or a vote cast by an electronic device, uh, which would be which will be new for us this year. When the delegates arrive to the delegate floor before a business meeting, they will be checked in for eligibility and give or, given a numbered voting device. They will then take their place on the delegate floor. Whenever the, a delegate leaves the floor, either during our session or at the end of the session, they'll turn in their placards in the voting device. If a voting device is not turned in, it will be immediately deact at the end of a pardon me. If a voting device is not turned in at the end of a at the end of a meeting, business meeting, it will be immediately deactivated so it can't be used by the delegate alternate or anyone who might be in the gallery. The delegate would get a new voting device when they return for the next session. If a voting device gets lost, meaning it is ne it never comes back to us at, with credentials at the at any point during the chapter would be invoiced for the cost of that replacement. So um, check them in and check them out delegates. We will give you more instruction on that when we get to Cleveland for sure. 
And so the last thing that I want to mention is just some decorum when in the business meetings. Uh, delegates are all provided with the materials that they should need in their delegate packet. Technology shouldn't be needed during the business meeting, and it's asked that side chatter on the delegate floor and the gallery is, is kept to a minimum so that we can hear all of the debate happening uh, on the floor. Additionally, technology such as text group chats uh, or uh, different software channels like Slack uh, really shouldn't be utilized for side conversations between the delegates across the room, nearby, or others in the gallery. Um, so one last piece uh, for decorum, um, please keep the your conversations and, and whatnot relevant to what we're talking about. If you are creating uh, different opportunities to connect uh, outside of the, the delegate floor, um, any use of, the, of technology for the purpose of degrading an individual or group of individuals for comments or opinions throughout con Congress can be considered conduct unbecoming of members. So just kind of keep that in mind um, as you are chatting with others throughout uh, the course of the weekend. Um, and so that is my highlights and I know I went through it really fast. So I'm gonna ask Shannon to, to come back to the screen. Um, look at that, she was ready for me um, and open it up again for any questions for either one of us. Yeah, there was a question earlier. I think you mostly answered it. Um, is it only delegates allowed in the business sessions? Great question. So no, all brothers can be in all of the delegate sessions, guests, or excuse me, in the business sessions. Uh, guests can also be in the business sessions as long as we are not discussing ritualistic legislation. It is only delegates or the one delegate or alternate that can be on the delegate floor casting votes, but and all other brothers or guests can be in the gallery. Yeah. Great question. So, so by that he means there's specified seating for all the delegates in the front. There's a gallery of a whole lot of seats in the back for everyone else who wishes to join. So um, Megan, you have a question. Yeah, I actually had a couple. The first one's quick. Are we going to receive a copy of the standing rules um, for Grand Chapter Congress? And then um, what is the process to switch between a delegate and an alternate? Great questions. And uh, these will also be covered in the delegate orientation. So the, the standing rules uh, will be distributed at the, the delegate orientation. Um, that's when we will walk through them uh, and, and have them for everybody uh, that is serving as a delegate. And then as far as switching of delegates, Megan, I, I little clarification, are you, uh, is this pre-Congress or is this during a business session or both? Um, both. Okay, great. So if you are switching delegates uh, prior to Congress, you can uh, send an email to uh, hub at dsp.org and we can get that switched up for you. Um, if you have not reported your delegates uh, for your chapters yet, please, 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 that July 1 date is all as Friday. I will reiterate that for Shanda uh, when we want you to have your delegates reported as well. Uh, if you are wanting to switch a delegate during a business session, what you would do is the sitting delegate and the alternate that you are switching to would approach the credentials chair, that's me, um, with your uh, delegate alternate form and uh, your placard and voting device. And again, we'll go a little bit more in depth on this at the delegate orientation. Great, did that help you, Megan? Yeah, I'm just trying to plan ahead because I'm technically the alternate, but want to speak on a lot of the proposals that I wrote. Oh, well, we're going to change the rules then. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a question came in also, what is the require, first required event for delegates? Sure. The first required event for delegates is going to be the delegate orientation on Wednesday night at 515 Eastern time. Um, there will be, we when you check in for the credentials desk, we will point out where it is. Uh, and what time you need to be there, we will remind you when you get when we give you all of your delegate information uh, to be there uh, and get all of that last uh, minute information before we get we get started. Pardon me, not last minute information because it's the information that everybody is getting at the same time. 
Yes, but although that is the first required event for delegates, I sure do hope that everybody takes advantage of the, the program we have throughout Wednesday. Lots of great education and, and opportunities. So, and um, Shanda, one more thing on that, that it is required for both delegates and alternates to be at the delegate orientation. Yes, delegate and alternates. And then Daisha asked, are the delegates and alternates required to attend the orientation and business sessions? You. So delegates and alternates are required, are both required, all required to attend the delegate orientation. The, there will only be one individual, one person from the chapter that will be on the delegate floor to cast votes. We encourage the alternates to be in the gallery so that in the event that they need to take over for the delegate that is on the floor and has been credentialed to be on the floor, they will be informed. So we highly recommend that your alternates are also attending all of the business meetings. Yes. Great. What other questions about credentials, delegates, alternates, attending, any, any Congress stuff? Allie. So this might have just gone totally over my head, but how do you officially designate someone as the delegate? Was that something that needed to be done in the hub or if there's only one attendee coming from a school, are they automatically the delegate? No, great question, Allie. So there is a form in the hub, um, the, the delegate uh, report form, I believe is what it is called in the hub, um, that even if you are the only the only individual coming from your chapter, you do still need to fill that form out to be listed as your chapter's delegate. Awesome. And would that be my responsibility to fill it out or our chapter operations? Uh, chapter operations, chapter president um, would have the ability to fill that out. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You bet. Yep. Great question, Allie. All right. Anything else? I know we have several staff members and other longtime volunteers on here. Is there anything that you didn't hear that you believe we should mention before we let people run away and finish their Monday night? All right. Well, if you're like me at 2 a.m., you're going to wake up and think of something you forgot to ask. And you can certainly send us a message. I did have, she had, oh, I did yeah. have one, one question come in uh, about testimonials. Um, so want to just kind of throw that out there, especially for our collegiate members um, that are on the call this evening. So testimonials are a, a tradition at Grand Chapter Congress where you can honor an individual or group of individuals and have it recorded in the Congress minutes. Um, in many cases, those will be read aloud uh, during Congress itself. And so uh, if you have an individual or group of individuals that you would like to honor and recognize and have it placed in the official Congress minutes, uh, you can go to dsp.org slash testimonials and fill out the testimonial form. Those are all due uh, through that form or to the chair by 5 p.m. Eastern time, the Friday of Congress. Excuse me, the, that business session, not the Friday before. <laughs> Right. So the 15th, July 15th, 5 p.m. Eastern time, those will be due. Great. Thank you for clarifying that. All right. Well, again, if you think of something that didn't get asked or you don't see in an email later this week and you have a question, if it's about the program itself, feel free to reach out to registration at dsp.org. Um, if it's about delegates and credentials, we have a credentials at dsp.org. Is that right? Or am I, just send all your questions to registration at dsp.org. We will make sure it gets to the right staff person and, and you get the answers that you need. Um, but yes, do look for that email by end of Thursday, maybe sooner, that will have all your information, information about the app. And if you don't get an email, be sure and reach out to us, check your spam and such, because we do want you to get that app all loaded up and it'll answer so many more questions as you start packing. So thank you, Tyler. And if nobody else has anything, he, Tyler and I will stick around for just a few seconds. But if you are, um, if you're good, go enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, so I just thought of a question. I have a quick question about registration. Sure. So I have someone um, in our chapter who 
can only attend on Saturday and then, but will come in around like six o'clock on Friday. Would they have to pay for a full registration on Friday to join us at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Or yeah. is there a way to just, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so we just offer registration by day. Oh. So okay. it's, you know, a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday, Saturday, any combination thereof or a full registration. Gotcha. Okay. No yeah. problem. Thank you. Okay. Of course. I also just thought of one last question before I, I leave out, if that's okay. Of course. Um, so there are several workshops going on during the business sessions. Um, is it recommended that the people that are allowed in the gallery go to the business sessions or attend those workshops? You know, it is completely your choice. So as long as your chapter has, you know, it's delegate in there. And if you are not that delegate and you have a strong desire to, um, you know, go, go attend one of those professional development workshops, that's why we have them there. You know, not everybody wants to listen to all the legislation all the time. They like having options. So it, it is your choice. But that is not a substitute for your delegate. If they're not in the business session, if you know, if you don't have someone seated, then you will not receive the chapter credit accordingly. But as an individual, you choose whatever you'd like to be at. Okay, thank y'all so much. Uh huh. Yes, Angela. Oh, you're. I I'm still muted. Nope, you're good. No, now. we got you now. Okay. Um, so I think there um, may be some confusion as far as CMP credit. Can y'all just go over just to make sure that even though this is a special GCC, that in order to receive credit for next year in CMP, they have to have one person fully registered, correct? Fully Am I correct? Fully registered and attend all sessions all business sessions all required sessions yeah okay very good what else we have another hand up no i think it's angie's hand still there here we go i got it i got it all right we've got a few hanger honors any questions or are you just waiting to see what happens after the show is over <laughs> i'm being newsy <laughs> Well, I just that wanna, is just fine. <laughs> well, I just want to let people know that uh, you know, if you want to save a few dollars and like burgers, that Cleveland is having their burger week to week that we're in Cleveland. So, and several of the restaurants are actually within walking distance of hotels. So, yeah. six dollar burgers. That's awesome. Great. And if anyone's coming in the weekend prior to Grand Chapter Congress, it's Tall Ships is happening. So, um, and that will just be down from the hotel just on the waterfront down by Rock Hall of Fame, which is very close to us. So that should be kind of fun to see. 